Takedown Wrestling. I'm Tony Hager. Today I'm joined by the new assistant at Virginia Tech, full time now, and uh, he's in uh, his cabin once again. Uh, last time yeah. we had an interview, you were there as well. So, uh, yeah. how uh, how's how's the summer been for you, Mike? It's been good. Been busy, and I got a little bit of downtime now for a few weeks before school starts back up. So I'm just enjoying some Montana. Well, when you when you took the position, was this always kind of the plan to to get you into the full time assistant role, or I mean, is this just something that happened after a successful year last year? Yeah, it was not really the plan. Um, it was one of those things where we really didn't know each other that well. Um, they didn't know what I was about until I got there, and we both kind of trial and errored it and said, you know, let's take it one year at a time. I had the you know, interest of coaching in college again, and that's why I went there. I didn't care if it was a volunteer or whatever the title was. It didn't really bother me. Um, I just wanted to make, have it be a good fit, and it ended up being a good fit um, with the program, with the coaching staff. Um, and I think the big thing is uh, just being able to be a coach and, you know, your word and, and your input is, is valued and, and having that there and, and Dresser being very flexible with with running the room and, and running workouts and practices and stuff like that was was kind of a, a strong selling point for me. Are you on the road doing a lot of recruiting, or who handles a lot of that for Virginia Tech? So in the past, it's uh, traditionally uh, Hoffman that was there, uh, Tony Roby, and Dresser. Uh, Dresser's on the road a lot. Most people that know Dresser know that. Um, but Roby um, has taken over there along with Dresser and then moving me in just recently. Um, I'll be more involved with that. And last year, obviously a great time for you to come be at Virginia Tech. <laughs> yeah, the most successful season that they've had. And, uh, you know, do, do the coaches, do they look at it as a, a good year? Are they satisfied with how you guys finished last year? Yeah, um, uh, I know the staff outside of myself um, are very pleased, and, and I am too. Um, you know, we're shooting. When I stepped in there, I think my the way I injected into the room, along with what they had there, and that philosophy, I guess, um, building them up, you know, it's just like every program. You can walk into a room and say, hey, we're going to be national champs, but there's got to be a process to get there. And there's got to have, you know, your outline, so to speak, and you got to go forward with that, with your product you have. And, and that's really what we did. But, you know, it's you can't just come in and knock off Penn State in eight months. And not saying it was just me. I'm saying our program or any program from that matter. It's that's a lot of lot of investment to get there, and it just showed what we did do throughout the season. A few things that were probably well, a lot of things that were different for these guys that you just it worked well because you could read it in your athlete, and we'll just build off it. And it's by no means where we want to be, but it's in the right direction, and it is a big gap. I mean, the program has consistently been a top; they've taken tenth place, you know. I think top 10 three times and just getting over that hump. And, you know, this year was kind of a blast through from 10 to four. It's pretty good. And, you know, we just, we had some things not really go our way in that tournament also that I, I thought, you know, one, two finish would be, you know, that'd be even better. And there's just, there's got to be a reality that I mean, you guys know you guys can probably national champs last year but that that's obviously a goal so i always find it kind of interesting after the season's kind of wind down and going to the next to ask the coach you know was last year seen as a success or a failure because if you're not the, if you're not first you're like you know you're not are you really satisfied but some is, you know, that, is that ricky bobby yeah that's ricky bobby so <laughs> like oh, ricky bobby on me so i mean oh, like there's like so. a, there's a, some schools that i've talked to that got sixth place and they're extremely disappointed with how they finish but you know, maybe somebody like yourself, your school, where you haven't had that success, it it it's it's no, a stepping it's, it's a stepping stone for you guys. That that exactly. the next the next the next goal now is to finish above that. You got to keep 
going. I mean, it's it's where uh, you guys are at right now. And um, I got to imagine, as far as recruiting goes, how much difference was is this summer been for you guys, you know, talking with the coaches, just on the recruiting trail, knowing that you guys can put together a top five team now? Um, you know, Dresser and Roby could answer that a little little better than I could. I'm kind of fresh into the scene of recruiting. Um, haven't had a whole lot of interaction. I've started to just recently, but, you know, being out to Fargo and stuff like that. But I haven't sat in anybody's living room yet. But, you know, we're looking at particular individuals and, and the way they compete. And that's just something that, as a staff, we've talked about and who we would like to target. And the simple thing for me is I want everybody – like every kid there is, I want them, every one of them. It's just reality sets in that uh, financially we can't just <laughs> do that. So it's really hard because there's so many great kids. You just really got to sit through those kids that are going to really thrive in your room and your philosophy and your environment. And I think the majority do fit into our room, and, and, and that's where you got to continue to – uh, you know, eliminate and and get after the direct ones that's going to be most beneficial and the best fit. So that part's what we do all have in common. Now it's just kind of setting that forward and the, setting that plan into place and going forward with it. So the last year, you know, come into Virginia Tech, you guys didn't know what you were going to have. You didn't know what if it was going to be a good fit with Dresser. And, you know, looking back and looking where you're at now, you know, coaching I mean, what, what's it like being back coaching and molding these young kids uh it's just it's awesome it really is it's um you know being involved in the sport for so long it's been my whole life and I'm a pretty passionate person and and it's just not not being around that and then being back in it and then dealing with these individuals and on a daily basis and watching the development take place. And it wasn't from the first of the year till the end of the year. Um, you talk about our nationals a lot because we end up fourth and, you know, we were, we were in third until the heavyweight match and very easily, you know, if we had Zavatsky come through where we, you know, thought for him to come through where his potential was and Joey dance, we'd be sitting even better, but it's, it wasn't just all that development. It was, from a daily basis to a weekly basis, you could see kids, athletes, I shouldn't call them kids, but see them turning corners and and getting better. And it wasn't like you thought it up. They'd come up to you and be like, oh, I feel so, you know, and they respond back to you and how the great they're feeling and how awesome this was. And that how I had a kid come up to me, Shisco, Solomon Shisco, our 41, came up to me one day during the week. He's like, that, that I've, it's amazing how I feel myself get better every single day. Not just, you know, when a kid can feel that and believe that, it's, you know, to me, that's the reward. That's, it's like, it's my high, I guess. I just, it's satisfying as a coach. I think it would be for anybody, really. But that kind of, I don't really fish for those kind of comments, but when it just naturally comes to you. And he wasn't the only one, but you just see that progress and that growth in each one. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why you do it. The other, the ones that you don't, and you know, that's why coaches turn gray and go crazy pretty quick too, is the ones that maybe aren't quite buying in or, 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 or believing in themselves and the philosophy and the, you know, and the staff. So, but what's it been like having St. John on staff, uh, former, you know, an Iowa boy as well. You know, how's that interaction been with you guys as far as coaching goes? It's been great. It's been great. I when I went out for the job, I called him first before I even took the job and, and contacted him to come out. So um, I knew it was going to be a fit, and I had contacted him and Dan Dennis. You know, they the whole spiel about that. But um, just knowing those two guys for a long time, having good relations, uh, knowing their ability as athletes and as coaches, I just thought it would be a good fit. And and Derek is a phenomenal coach. He was a great wrestler. He was a smart wrestler. And he's, I think he's really 
on his way to be a really, really good coach as well. With uh, last year, I guess say the drama that came about with the national duels between Iowa and Virginia Tech. I mean, is there is that just kind of in the moment type deal of there being a little bit of ba- bad blood, or is that still there? Are you guys still kind of carrying that? Hey, we want to wrestle Iowa in a non-conference duel or at you know the national duels as fast you know as soon as we can because we we want that matchup. Well, that whole situation is is gone and it's just come and gone. Um, the bottom line is. We ended up wrestling Michigan, and they wrestled NC State, and that's the way it is. Uh, you'd look at it any other way, and um, we all know what should have happened and could have happened and didn't happen, and it is what it is. So it's, that's what happened. I mean, yeah, there's emotions at the time, but, you know, those emotions stem back from 10 years ago too and, and beyond. So that's just part of the sport and being competitive and and the history of the programs and who's involved. So. I didn't know if it was. I didn't know if it was something to where, you know, some of these rivalries that come about. You know, you never. We don't really know how some of them start. A lot of them are in conference, in conference stuff. Uh, but yeah. this is non-conference, so I was just kind of curious if, for for the fans, it's kind of it's fun for uh, for the fans and media to to see this type of. Uh, I guess back and forth um, happening. So I just kind of curious if a non-conference duel, you know, will get set up between you know dresser and brands at some point. Well, I know my 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 boss would be all for it. So I, I know that much. I can't speak for the other side, but um, <laughs> I know it would be. You know, here's a here's the thing. It's it's no secret. I mean, obviously, Iowa wrestling is. It's the powerhouse of college wrestling and has been. There's unbelievable tradition there that is second to none. And with that, any program would want to wrestle Iowa. A program that, like Virginia Tech, for instance, that hasn't had nowhere near that tradition or success, um, everybody wants a chance at it. And especially when you got um, a pretty good uh, on paper lineup. Uh, to be able to compete legitimately with a with a, a powerhouse program like that, it, it would be huge. It would be huge for the program, for the individuals, you know, the administration, all that. So whether we were good enough to compete with them this year or uh, we wouldn't be good enough to compete, you still want to have a chance at the Penn States and the Iowas and Oklahoma State. So um, with that said, there's there's – you know, there's no uh, skirting around the fact that there's some history between myself, St. John, Dresser, Virginia Tech, Iowa, um, and and the people there. So that's that's part of it. Uh, we're all in a small world. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully we we'll get hopefully we'll get to see it. Um, yeah, let's just go. Looking forward to next year. Kids in the room. Yeah, you, just based off of our conversations, what I've heard from you and in other interviews is. And you kind of you know gravitate to you know some kids and um, you 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 can kind of tell uh, who the who those special kids are going to be that will really listen to you as a coach and are co- what I call coachable kids and who who this coming year I guess who has been standing out to you that has been putting in the work in the off season that maybe wasn't you know Chisco last year is there somebody that's going to step up that you've kind of caught an eye to this summer? Um. I would – nobody that's stepping up maybe more so. When I got there, most of the individuals in this program, I think for the most part, believed in me from the get-go. They just – I could feel the respect and I could see the output and what they did. And there's – with that said, though, they've continued to do it and I've seen some make some big gains in a short amount of time. And a guy like uh, Ty Walls and Jared Hodd are fully uh, committed, 100%, and and we've worked a lot together. I know a lot of people say, well, there's not a heavyweight coach or this or that, but that's all hogwash. It's You coach big guys, little guys. I actually have always gravitated towards big guys, uh, naturally, like heavyweights and, and stuff. But uh, Ty, Ty Walls, um, he's, he's a – 
unbelievable athlete. He is a, a worker. He's a great example. Uh, and Jared Hott has turned corners with us last year, uh, even since national tournament uh, into Akron. Um, and a lot of these kids had zero freestyle experience. So just being able to train and get ready for Akron and actually compete, um, they learned a lot and they got a lot better in that short time uh, in the sport and have continued through this summer. So those two have stuck out to me uh, definitely more than more than the rest. You mentioned freestyle. Have you? Has that been important for you and for Dresser bringing you in to bring more of that freestyle uh, practice into the room and especially in the off season? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, um, having having me involved, obviously, with a, a long freestyle career and stuff, um, that was a big focus. Why he? You know, we have our our club right now is called the Southeast Regional Training Center, and you know, when he brought me in, I'm the head coach of it, which, you know, we have a couple guys in our club, but just like all clubs are trying to build and, and put the right fits in there. But, um, yeah, from that freestyle, freestyle perspective, and then we got Coach Roby had a, a freestyle career as well, and then with uh, St. John and, and Devin Carter's around in that club. So it's, you know, that is a focus to build off of for our program. And uh, our athletes now – um, maybe never had that direction or thought. And like an example, Ty Walls told me last year he's going to get this, get his degree, and he's got some job op opportunities already. And after about two, three months knowing me and me saying a few things to him about freestyle and wrestling, he came up to me and said, Coach, I'm going to train for the Olympics. So, I mean, it, it was just maybe exposing him to that kind of talk. And now, it's not so much exciting about going into the world and having a job for, you know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. It's it's not what uh, you know he's after right now. It's actually looking to build in the sport and beyond college. So that to me is exciting because right there you single-handedly gave purpose to a kid to follow a bigger goal in the sport and know that that's out there and a kid that's very capable of it too. It's not it's not necessarily like a pipe dream, you know. Well, that's, that's important. That's something that we haven't had in the sport, I guess, in the last 10 years. I mean, la the last probably six years, I guess, we've seen it. But before, it was you graduate and you go to, you know, you go to a job. You get a $40,000 job. But la in the last quad, it seems like we've seen a lot more people go to that freestyle route. They have the RTCs that can support these athletes to try to build USA Wrestling. And, uh, you know, with Bill getting the job, uh, you know, that obviously uh, probably helps you push those guys towards, you know, their future to, to help Team USA America out. And when he got the job, actually, Richard asked him who who would win in a freestyle match, you or Bill. He obviously said himself. But, so now <laughs> I got the opportunity to ask you, if you guys wrestle in a freestyle match today, who would win? I would, hands down. And I'll tell you why I would. Because every time we've ever drilled or wrestled together, he always punches me, so he's going to get kicked out of the match. <laughs> <laughs> what what would be uh, what would be uh, your technique against him? I mean, would you leg lace him? I mean, what what would be the first uh, go to move for Mike Zadek on Bill Zadek? I'd probably tie my laces and dive in on him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure we'll come across it someday. We'll yeah. be up the mountains getting into it over something. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, I appreciate the time talking about, uh, you know, the, your, your new, uh, I guess, your new promotion and uh, the future of Virginia Tech. I appreciate you having me on. Thank, thank you. you much. Hey, thank you.